Okay, something else I just noticed with the SMC controller. I'll just hold it up here. If you just watch this part of the screen here, as you change X, Y and Z, obviously it changes here on the screen, so it gives you an indication on the screen as well as a physical indication here, plus plus my dog's feeding time out there as well. So it gives you an absolute uh, measurement of what you have your jog set in at as well. Absolutely perfect. It's exactly what you require. Uh, there's another handy little feature that I'd like to show you. Um, so if you come to the controller here, press that. Um, LCD brightness. Now this is uh, 100 to 400, sorry 100 to 500. Uh, 500 being the darkest. Um, it's normally set at 400, I set it at 300 because the camera picks it up better, I think. Um, actually, we'll just do a check on that while I've got it running. So we'll set that to 400 and press OK. So you can see that the difference between 4 and 300. So I think I prefer 300. Maybe 350, possibly. Possibly 350 is cleaner. I don't know. Um, I'll leave it at that for now. But that's how to change the, the brightness of the screen. Um, nothing else there you'd want to touch I don't think uh, at this point in time. So I'm going to press save. Every time you make a change you've got to press save and we'll come out of that. So we'll OK come out of that. Reset. Now I'd just like to take this opportunity to put the records straight because I have been receiving some complaints actually um, and that is that a lot of you out there in the comments section are asking me where I bought my laser and my large CNC router and other machines that I have. Well, the simple fact of it is I can't tell you because I would be putting you in, I suppose, maybe in a little bit of an awkward situation because laws have changed around the Western world. And what it means is Virtually none of the electrical machinery items such as CNC routers and lasers coming out of China and other countries like that uh, do not meet Western electrical standards. And the, the problem becomes, well it becomes a problem for you when you receive your machine, you order your machine and you receive it and the next thing you know you have a fine in the mail because you have imported a machine into your country that doesn't meet your country's electrical standards and now that fine is upwards of $3,500 
per offence. So a machine that you bring in could have two, three or four things wrong with it that doesn't meet your country's electrical standards. That means it's four offences and four separate fines. You could have a bill for $20,000 from your government. So that's why I do not publicise or tell you or answer you when you ask where I get my machines from. Things have changed around the world and unfortunately it's not widely known yet but this is a fact. So I'm sorry I cannot tell you where to get a machine from. So that's another thing that's driven me to doing this build. Now this entire build cost, all right, I've been trying to get the cost under 1000 US dollars. And I think I've pretty well achieved that. It's, it's around about a thousand dollars, maybe fifty dollars either way. But for that you have a pretty substantial little CNC router that you can do a hell of a lot of uh, projects with. Um, I did have someone the other day ask me how to move an axis uh, a defined amount. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, but so, first of all, take the reset off by pressing this button here. Then go into here and select the next box up here. Press so it goes green and just say for example uh, we want one of the axes to move um, should we say 20, 20 millimeters press and it will go yellow so you can press an axis and it will move 20 millimeters um, any of the axes they will actually move that defined amount so if you want to uh, trim your motors in and you want a defined amount to move so you can measure it this is where you go to put that figure in. I've got the uh, my DTI gauge and this is in um, millimeters so each one revolution is one, re one millimeter so each division is a hundredth of a millimeter which is a very small amount indeed. So what I'm going to, I've just done now is gone into the manual jog speed window and I'm going to set five, just five millimeter to travel. Um, okay, so it's going to come over this way five millimeters. Let's see what the measurement is. That's exactly right. I mean, you know, this is on quite a big long stalk as well. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a little bit of deflection there, but it's pretty well perfect. So to check that, now what I'm going to do now is set that to zero and go move up to the one millimeter window and I'm going to move it back that way one millimeter per pulse and see if it matches up one two three four five and it does okay so I know now that that setting in the motor tuning of 400 steps per is exactly right for the, the you know the stepper motors and for these uh, lead screws, um, and I'm I'm happy with that. You know, it's within within a couple of fail. So it's within a couple of thousandths of an inch, and 
that's all you can ask for really from uh, you know certainly a home built CNC router um, I'm very happy with that um, so really now this is set up to operate um, so what I've got to do now is I've got to put a bed in here because this, this, this isn't a permanent bed uh, so I've got to make a permanent bed um, and also well I'll run it for a little while on this bench it's fine but what I want to be able to do oh something I wanted to show you guys as well I'll just quickly show you uh, I just want to show you guys uh, something and you need to if you have followed this build and the drawings uh, you just need to be aware of that when this uh, spindle is over on this far side and it's uh, fully down there should be about a three millimeter clearance here okay now that's the way I've designed it uh, but you need to check that before you start running it because uh, you, you know you don't want to go bashing this into the into the side here so we'll just um, we'll send it to its home and I'll just send it down just to show you Start to pour down the rain outside too. So there you go. It's about it's about three millimeters clearance there. So uh, you know, just make sure that you do have that clearance because uh, you know you can if you go bashing into that, uh, you could you could end up putting something out of, out of line. Okay. So um, you know that's the way I've got mine set. Um, so and you do that by. You know, you set the maximum travel by putting your your limit switch, you know, and, and measuring this area here um, to the you know the maximum travel. So I just wanted to show you that. Lovely. <laughs> I could play with this all day. Uh, something else I wanted to show you as well, and that is the amount of uh, overhang that I've designed into this build. Um, it's approximately, I'll measure exactly now, well, as exact as you can with a rule. I know that this is flush with the end here. So, oh there we go, 45 millimeter. And the reason that is, is because I am going to have like a two-stage bed. The bed is going to be ordinary here, but I'm also going to have a bed down in that direction so I can clamp uh, boards up against that so I can, I can do dovetail joints or, you know, sort of box tail. Uh, or box joints on the end of planks to make drawers or whatever so that's the way I've designed that um, of course that will come into operation when I actually build the um, when I build the bench you know for it to, to fit onto and I will incorporate um, some sort of holding mechanism or a second bed uh, in the front of the the bench so there she is so I'm sure you can hear that it's just started to rain 
and when it rains hard yeah, it makes it impossible to film. So I think we'll draw this video to a close now. Uh, next video, uh, I may video a little bit about uh, me putting, making the uh, bed and putting the bed in, the waste board. Um, and um, hopefully in the next video we'll be um, doing our first cuts and uh, actually making sure that everything is true and square and um, I shouldn't be, you know, shouldn't have to make any adjustments at all. Um, it should be fine, and we will, I don't know, do a, do some sort of um, machining operation with it, and uh, over the next uh, few months we'll see, we'll find out together what its limits are. Um, you know, these are the largest NEMA 17s that you can you can get. Um, and by what I've seen already, they're performing perfectly. Uh, you know, for the work that I, I do, shouldn't need um, to upgrade it. And uh, so, I mean, so far I'm very happy with the way the controller is operating too. It's very natural to, uh, to operate. Um, but we shall put some G-code in it. For the next video and uh, we'll get it to to do some machining operations so uh, if you like the video please like and subscribe and I would as always I'd like to take this I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the patrons behind this channel because it is the patrons that are behind the channel um, you know that support it every month uh, that enables me to bring content to everybody like this. So uh, once again patrons, thank you very much. And I don't think I'm going to be able to make uh, another video before Christmas Day because I'm running way behind because uh, I've got to get some Christmas shopping in as well. Uh, but I'll try. I'll try and do a Christmas special. Um, but we'll, we'll just have to see what time I've got. So, anyway, thank you for tuning in and watching this video. And uh, so it's bye for now. Bye.